Somebody shout hallelujah. Tonight, we have come to receive a touch from God. And can I assure you tonight that after tonight, you will not leave that door the same way you come to this place. Keep standing. I want to appreciate our Father in the Lord for this opportunity. Daddy, Mama, thank you. I appreciate. Um, I pray the Lord will bless you people richly in Jesus' name. All my senior pastors in the house, I, I celebrate you all in the name of Jesus. Uh, Mama, behind there, God bless you, Ma. Also, Mommy V, God bless you, Ma. And all of you, you are wonderful, you are beautiful. I say, may the name of the Lord be blessed for your life in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, set my heart on fire for you. Shakata Labagadias. For you. Are you ready tonight? Oh Lord, set my heart on fire for you. I want to burn for you. Ha. Oh Lord, set my heart on fire for you. It's all we want tonight. For you, sing, oh Lord. Oh Lord, set my heart on fire. Set it on fire, Lord, for you. Oh Lord, oh Lord. Set my heart, Lord. Set my heart on fire for you. I want you to sing it from your spirit. That is what we are, we are going to be doing tonight. We want God to set us on fire tonight, and that is all we want. Tonight is a moment of rekindling. After tonight, God will be setting you on a dimension of fire that you cannot recover from. After tonight, there will be a revival that will be breaking forth in your heart that you will not be able to recover from it. After tonight, God will be setting you on a kind of fire. That after that, when you leave this place, you will not be able to recover from it. Oh, oh Lord. Set my heart on fire. Set it on fire. Set it on fire, Lord. Shake it, Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Somebody here tonight with with heart problem. I don't know who you are, but he told me, say you have problem with the heart, pain in the heart. The Lord said you'll be setting you free tonight. I may not lay my hands on you, but as the word of the Lord will be coming forth, the word of the Lord, the power there will be hitting that pain out. And the Lord also begin to speak to me. He said there is another one with pain in the right leg. I don't know who you are. Any pain in the right leg at the word of the Lord tonight, that pain is gone. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Sit 
down. Sit down. Sit down. The choir will continue with the song. So give me a very low background of the song. I want to share with us tonight what the Lord wants you to learn tonight. Burdens in the heart of the Father. Burden in the heart of the Father. I want to start by saying we have a father for you to be here tonight you have a father and permit me so, to say you are not a biological accident in other words you are made based on God calculated basis. Now, God is not unconscious of your existence. That is to say, it's not that God was sleeping when you sneak out from nowhere to this world. He is your father. And God have made it in such a way that he cannot do anything without you. God can only move where you are, sir. According to the original plan of heaven. That is where you are, sir. Men don't need to look for God again. Because heaven is expecting that you will carry the burdens of the heart of the Father, demonstrating it in your territory. And that Bishop Benson in Dahusa said, He said, The leaders of the witches and wizards are correct by saying, Not even God can stop our meeting. He said, God don't need to come. That is why He have me here. Burdens is a responsibility, a duty. That is that can be carried in the heart of men. When we talk about burdens, it's something that can be carried. It is something that is emotionally difficult to bear. Sometimes you will be bearing some burdens in your heart. Thank you. Please, those of us over the gallery, please, let's understand that a service is going on here. Thank you. I wouldn't want any noise, please. Amen. It's something that is emotionally difficult to bear. And some of us, when some things strike our heart, we will cry. We will cry. We will cry. These are burdens. But where we are going tonight, we want to see body as a responsibility or a duty in a heart of the Father. There is a heartbeat of God for you. Before I continue, this message is coming for those who are born again. If you are here tonight and you have not given your life to Christ, you are out of the game yet. But you still have chance. As you are sitting down now, I will not call you here to what to say and come and, and tell me, I, God, I give my life. No, 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 no. Right where you are sitting now, 
I want you to resolve yourself with God. This heartbeat is for the children of God. There is an expectation that heaven has for each and every one of us. And that moment you fail to want to take this responsibility, you attack a failure. Heaven will not record your car as a success. Heaven will not record the amount of suit you have as a success. Because there are things that will perish. But there are things that is coming from the heart of the Father that heaven is expecting that Pastor Ebuka will handle. And when you fail to handle it, sir, it means you've started failing. Can you run with me to the book of Matthew? Matthew chapter 26. I want us to be fast tonight. If you are there, you can begin to read for me. Matthew 26. You take 40 and 39 for me because of our time. Matthew 26. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And he cometh unto the disciples. And he cometh unto the disciples. And findeth them asleep. And he formed them asleep. And he said unto Peter. And he said unto Peter. What? What? Could you not watch with me and one hour? Could you not watch with me for one hour? Continue. Hallelujah. 39. Continue. And he went a little further. And he went a little further again. And he fell on his face. And he fell on his face. And prayed, saying, And prayed, saying, Oh, my father. Oh, my father. If it be possible. If it is possible. Let this cause, let this cup pass from me. Let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. Not as I will. Not as I will. But as thou will. As thou will. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, this is when Jesus is about to face the reality of his word of being on earth. The Bible says he took some of his disciples and they went. He said, stay here while I go to pray. And the Bible speaking, he said, when Jesus went, he prayed, he prayed, and guess what he's saying? He said, Father, you know, I have been doing this job. I have been doing this work. In fact, miracles have been happening, and demons have been casted out. All I need now, I don't want to die. If it is possible, take it away from me. But he said, no. Not as I will, but as thou will. That is a man that is ready to fulfill the heart of the Father. It will hit you so strong at a point that humanly you see it that I don't have to do this. But when you look into the heartbeat of the father, beating, din, din. He said, no, I cannot let this heartbeat beat in vain. That is what Jesus did. And the Bible says he came back to the disciples and he found them sleeping. Now, I was thinking Jesus is going to say, well, it's my cross anyway. Let me leave them to sleep. They are not even going to help me anyway. But guess what he said? He waked them. He tapped them. He said, why are you sleeping? Can't you watch with me? Even for how many hours? Even for one hour? Now the question is, sir. What has watching with him for one hour do, do have to do with carrying of the cross for him? Knowing fully where that is going to be the one that is going to carry the cross. <laughs> what is Jesus saying? He said, he's saying, does that mean you care 
cared not about the burdens in my heart. You care not that I am weeping now. And I can hear Jesus say now, Pastor Ebuka, care that not that you see your what your community taken over by the spirit of fornication. <laughs> Pastor Daniel, and I can hear heaven saying, Why are you still sleeping? When men are perishing. Pastor Peter, you sing here, you're a spiritual man. And the Bible said, He said, David begin to sing, playing instrument. What happened? Demon left the king, and the king has peace. And heaven is saying, Care that not. That men are tormented on the street with demon, and you have a voice, you remain here. Heaven is expecting that time you will go to the street with a speaker, and when you begin to sing, everybody passing drop their thing and they come around, and all they begin to do, they begin to weep. This is the expectation of heaven, the heartbeat of God. Mama, in your family, and I can imagine heaven saying, Kire that not that your children are not on fire. Hey, I wish somebody is getting me tonight. Kire that not that your father. Alcoholism is taking over him. Why are you still comfortable? It's the moment to say, Oh God, set my heart on fire. Responsibility is what we want to see. I will discuss with us three basic burdens of the heart of the father for the youth, for everybody in this dispensation. But before then, can somebody read for me? Luke chapter 22, 43 to 44. If you are there, begin to read immediately. Luke chapter 22, 43 to 44. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. An angel came from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. And being in agony, and he began to pray earnestly. And his sweat was at, at it were a great drop of blood falling down to the and ground. They the, the sweat coming down from Jesus was like a drop of blood. Stop there, sir. <laughs> he said, and he is in agony. The pain was so much that Jesus began to sweat at blood. The question is, has the blood, the sweating of the blood, has it stopped? He cannot stop until this world come to an end. He is sweating because of soul. And those soul are still in existence. They are around you, sir. The heartbeat of God there is a pain in the heart of God. There is a cry in the heart of God. There is a hunger in Jesus for the word that he wants us to carry. He is no longer here. There is a hunger in my spirit. 
it is still within me. Feel this hunger, Lord, with your Holy Ghost. A hunger in my spirit. Feel this hunger, O oh God, with your Holy Ghost. There are burdens in the heart of the Father that we need to share with Him to manifest His nature and mighty wonders. Some of us, we have been praying. We have been fasting. Oh God, use me. Oh God, do, do, do a miracle. Do a miracle. How do miracle cannot happen like that the only people that can rot miracle in time like this are people who go into the heart of the father who know what the heart of the father is saying who know what the lord want to do at each moment and they switch into the heart of the father and they carry the burden maybe the burden of the lord is to raise the dead you go there and say lord any burden there you say yes son i want this dead raised you say take the burden you you carry it. You come to the man and say, Hey, stand up. You are not permitted to die. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that is what we call miracle. You are praying for miracle. Uh, Father, I want to do miracle. And you are sitting down in one place without knowing the heart of God, without sharing the burdens in the heart of God. No, sir. It's not for you. And most especially in times such as this. <laughs> hey! And I was in Lagos. I was working. I missed my December salary. My second in command. He looked at me. Say, Ken, where are you going? I say, Ma, I cannot stay. I need. I have some work to settle on my table in Osuka. I'm going there now. Liga baga yaga. And I left. A day that a day, a few days to my traveling. I sat in my room. I was calculating, and I said, What am I going to do? My head could not get it. My head could not get it. But my spirit is saying, There is something there that I want you to go and settle. That is the potency in the heart of the father and when i came something is happening in my life that i cannot understand i almost cried daily on altars of prayer in my room these days see heaven need men that want that have prepared themselves to carry god in time like this We are about to pray. Bodies in the heart of the Father. What are the bodies? Number one. Bodies for the redeemed. Bodies for the redeemed. Matthew chapter 24 verse 4. Can you go with me first? If you are there, begin to read. Matthew 24 verse 4. Bodies for the redeemed. Matthew 24 verse 4. Yes, sir. Sorry. Hallelujah. And Jesus answered and said unto them. And Jesus answered and said unto them. Take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed that no man did what? Deceive, deceive you. Organiser, can you play for me? Play for me. Yes, yeah, strike it. Uh -huh. God bless you, sir. Set my heart on fire. He said, Take heed that no man deceive you. And Jesus was emphasizing on this until now is a body in the heart of God. He is saying, You got to be careful that no man deceive you. He said, If God do not shorten the time, even the very elect will be deceived. 
and I can imagine Jesus weeping for us that are saved now. Pastor Daniel, in the next five years, can we still find you here? Say, Buka, you are a coordinator now, is that not? When I come in the next five days, can I still find you coordinating my congregation? He's a body in the heart of the Father. Brother Sansi, you joined the race. Can God find you in the next ten years? In time such as this, we are seen has become normal. We, the fire in the heart of men, is going down on daily basis, and no one is crying. Oh Lord, set my heart on fire for you. They are no longer praying. Oh Lord, send my heart on fire for you. For you. Can you be found? It is a heartbeat of God when I return. The body in the heart of the Father. Take heed that nothing deceive you. Let no man deceive you. Let education not deceive you. I remember when I was in secondary school. When we reached SS3, all my friends they left to miracle centers. I sat for SSC four times. Because I said, I will take it all by myself in heaven. Some of my mates, they have gone far, right? Some have their own house. But it perish. It will waste one day. <laughs> it will turn. That you will not see the car no more. It will return one day. And we will not see the house anymore. We will turn one day and we will not see the dresses anymore. The habit of God in time like this. Body number two in the heart of God. The body for the lost soul. For the lost soul. One thing is needful is the kingdom. Can you go with me to Isaiah 6 verse 8? If you are there, begin to read. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8. Hallelujah. No one there? Chapter 6, verse 8. Yes, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And who will go for us? Then said I, Then said I, Here am I. Here am I. Send me. Send me. Bodies for the lost soul. It is in the heart of the Father now. My apostle, I celebrate you. When I came back, I was so happy for this young man. When I look deep down, and God will take you places. In the name of Jesus. Permit me to tell you tonight that salvation is beyond being safe 
and stay in the church. He said, Go ye into the world and preach the if you are saved, and you said preaching of the gospel is for brother Kenneth. Hey, you are missing it. He said, All of you go into the world and preach. And I can hear the Lord say now, Who we go for us? Is that not what we just read? Pastor Daniel, you are here. And the Lord is saying, Who we go for us? The Lord wants you to go out. He wants you to go into your family. He wants you to look at your husband and said, My husband cannot remain in the place of the devil. Today, from now henceforth, husband, you can no longer share a lot with the devil. I carry you from that side to this other side. Evangelism by fire. brother says he went out on Saturday we met a young man and after preaching to the man he looked at him he said do you have anything to say he said please help me pray I need more of God please and I asked him I said young man what is your name he said my name is Aka Chuku I don't hear Igbo and brother Sansin and the young man helped me to interpret. He says the hand of God. Praise the Lord. I said that settles the matter. We prayed for him. And there was joy. He said, Who are we go for us? In your family, you are born again and you keep coming to this church. It is not enough. It is time to take over your family. It is time to take over your street. It is time to take over your department. It is time to take over the school. It is time to take over. Go out. Tell the world about Jesus. Tell them that Jesus saved. Time with me to go deep. Lastly, the burden of who will stop the nonsense is the next one and it is the last one. The burden in the heart of God. Number three, the burden of who will stop the nonsense. Bishop Benson in Dahusa say something. He said, my problem with God, all the years I have been with God is just one thing. Anytime I go to God and I say, Lord, what do you want me to do? And he said, God, we ask him back. He said, how do you want it done? They say, nobody should hold a crusade again. He said, Lord, can you hear what they are saying? What did you say? And he said, the Lord told him, what did you say? <laughs> he went and asked God, said, God, what did you say concerning that matter? And he said, Lord told him, son, what did you, 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 what did you say? And he said to the Lord, I want to hold crusade. He said, then go ahead. Why are you here? Go, go, go. Stand up and go. Stop the nonsense. Why would the people I create say it? I should not go and speak to my people. Go and stop them. It's time to stop nonsense. Wherever you are, you are to stop every nonsense that is the heart of God for you. 
I remember when I was studying mathematics and physics in one higher institution. I was in the library studying and immediately the Lord uh, took over me. I left the library. When I was going, I was going, I was going. I passed by a woman. A woman just passed me by. I've never known the woman before. And the Lord says, stop that woman and pray for her. I said, woman, excuse me. The Lord said, I should pray for you. He said, okay, sir. When I finish praying for her, when I'm about to go, he look at me and say, excuse me, sir. Even last night, I saw you in my dream. Pray for me. What was the prayer? The woman was pregnant. And the target of the enemy is to make that baby never come alive. And after a series of prayer, I tell you, when that child was delivered, the woman called me. I went for the, for the dedication or whatsoever. And I take some, some drinks, you know. I, I relax and I take some. You, know? you understand? Amen. I prayed now, is that not? Hallelujah. When you don't stop nonsense, enjoyment cannot come. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Where there is existence of nonsense, there will be heartache. Pain is what you will see. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Where you are, heaven is expecting that there should be no any nonsense. Yes, I am trusting God for us tonight that. After we cross that door tonight, as you are going to your house, you are going straight to your sick mother. You are going straight to your what to your paralyzed brother and say, Where are you? I have come back to correct the nonsense. I have come back to correct the nonsense in your life. You are going straight to where all the nonsense are in your family. And you said, Where are you, nonsense? I have come to correct nonsense. Have you forgotten the Bible says, Don't ye know that ye are God? Why are you expecting me to come? Why you are God? I will never come. That is what the Lord is saying. I was in school. I was called. They called me and said, Ken, can you rush home? What happened? They said, come, come, come. When I came, I saw my mother on the floor. She was just crying. Her legs swollen up. Say, what happened? Say, she just matched a charm. I begin to laugh. All of them look at me and they stop crying. They want me to join them and begin to cry. No, sir. I told them, now she have matched this charm. What is the next thing? Is to cast it out. Sir, sir. And I lay my hands on that leg. Sir. I say, you charm, you cannot remain here. Get out. And that is the end of that charm. The nonsense must be stopped in your department. I remember in that school that time when some lecturer want to want to scatter my life and the fellowship. I took my pen, I wrote to the man, I say, I'm coming to your office so 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 hours and so 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 hours. Don't go and do it. I was under instruction. And after the whole thing, the lecturer gathered together, they summoned me, I came. And I was still standing there, they begin to blame all of themselves. And they say, young man, you can go. Wherever you are, the nonsense must not continue. Stand to your feet. You got the power in your life you got the Holy Spirit in you you got Jesus in you all you need tonight is a fire that we lay that we want land on you and cause you to begin to what handle situation according to the bodies in the heart of the Father I challenge you tonight time of calculation is over Time of fear is over. Time of time of, of, of calculating whether it's going to happen or it's not going to happen. There should be no any nonsense. I am trusting God for us tonight. That after we cross that door tonight, 
as you are going to your house, you are going straight to your sick mother, you are going straight to your what to your paralyzed brother, and say, Where are you? I have come back to correct the nonsense. I have come back to correct the nonsense in your life. You are going straight to where all the nonsense are in your family, and you said, Where are you, nonsense? I have come to correct nonsense. Have you forgotten the Bible says, Don't ye know that ye are God? Why are you expecting me to come? Why you are God? I will never come. That is what the Lord is saying. I was in school. I was called. They called me and said, Ken, can you rush home? What happened? I said, come, come, come. When I came, I saw my mother on the floor. She was just crying. Her legs swollen up. See what happened? See, she just matched a charm. I begin to laugh. All of them look at me and they stop crying. They want me to join them and begin to cry. No, sir. I told them now she have matched this charm. What is the next thing? Is to cast it out. Yeah. And I lay my hands on that leg. I say, You charm, you cannot remain here. Get out. And that is the end of that charm. The nonsense must be stopped in your department. I remember in that school that time when some lecturer want to want to scatter my life and the fellowship. I took my pen, I wrote to the man, I said, I'm coming to your office, so, 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 so hours, and so, so, so hours. Don't go and do it. I was under instruction. And after the whole thing, the lecturer gathered together, they summoned me, I came. And I was still standing there, they begin to blame all of themselves. And they say, young man, you can go. Wherever you are, the nonsense must not continue. Stand to your feet. You got the power in your life. You got the Holy Spirit in you. You got Jesus in you. All you need tonight is a fire that we lay, that we want land on you and cause you to begin to what handle situation according to the bodies in the heart of the Father. Yes. Yes. I challenge you tonight. Time of calculation is over. Time of fear is over. Time of time of, of, of calculating whether it's going to happen or it's not going to happen and cause you to begin to what handle situation according to the bodies in the heart of the father. Yes, yes, I challenge you tonight. Time of calculation is over. Time of fear is over. Time of time of, of, of calculating whether it's going to happen or it's not going to happen. Calculating whether it's going to happen or it's not going to happen.